Hey, I want to look right into the camera and welcome everybody online and in Claremont. White River Junction is in the house. Can we give it up for everybody? Yeah, thank you guys for joining us. And just a quick reminder, if you are online, uh, I want you to do me a favor right now. We're actually going to participate in a time of communion together. So if you're at home online, you're in your pajamas, right? Go find something that you can participate in communion with us today. So maybe you've prepared that. You have like your saltine crackers and your grape juice, whatever it is, or maybe it's milk and cookies. It doesn't really matter the substance. It's the content of what we're going to talk about. So you're going to need that in a little bit. So just want to give you a heads up. And so we're in this series. It's called Aliens on Earth. It's, it's a series that we're actually concluding today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Have you enjoyed the, the series so far? I, I hope so. I hope it's been an encouragement to you. If you haven't been with us, I encourage you to go online on demand and you can catch up. You can go on YouTube. Uh, you go to our, our church website, or you can download the app. If you haven't downloaded the Riverbank app, you're, you'll probably need it today anyway. So you can download the app and there you can catch up on our series. Well, today I thought I'd do something a little different. Um, I, I was uh, contemplating like, okay, as we kind of close this series out, there's something that's been setting on me for a while. And I think a lot of it is just, I've been in like the Christian world for a really, really long time. Okay. I've been a follower of Jesus for uh, over 40 years now. And what can easily happen is we get in this like insular bu uh, bubble, right? And, and um, what can happen is like you have your own code talk, you know what I'm saying? Like Christians, we talk our own Christianese, our own language sometimes, and we do things that are weird. You guys follow me? You know what I'm saying? You're watching online. You're like, yes, Christians do a lot of weird things. Or Claremont, look, we can be weird, right? We can be really weird. And I want to just, I'm going to just lay it out there. Like, what are some of the weird things Christians do? And when we talk about it, you can laugh, we can have fun. Um, and, but it's also going to help maybe many of you. We've seen a lot of people come to faith here at Riverbank Church, and it might even help some of us like clarify, ah, oh, that's why we do that. And it'll be a real empowering moment. Cause here's the thing. We are aliens here on earth. Uh, we've talked about that for the past few weeks that we are citizens of heaven. And when we become followers of Jesus, our identity is completely in that eternal, uh, you know, eternity. We're heavenly citizens. We are no longer citizens of earth. We're aliens here. We're simply ambassadors of God from heaven here to represent Jesus. But when we do that, when we represent Jesus here on earth, we do weird things. Isn't that true? And, and I just want to share with you real quick some of the weird things we do. Now, the truth is, uh, when I walk through these, it's important that we know this, that there are weird things we do, okay? But it's not an excuse to be a jerk, okay? Because we're, we're Christians, we do weird things, but that's never an excuse for us to act up. Do you hear what I'm saying? And so that, I think that's a good premise for us to launch into weird things that Christians do. Let me just, I'm just, I wrote them down and I'm just gonna walk you through them. Does that sound good? So the first weird thing that Christians do, are you ready? Like when you, for maybe the first time you ever came to Riverbank or you tuned in today for the first time and there was a song and there were like words on, you were singing. That's weird, right? The first time you ever came to church, you were like, am I in a karaoke bar? Like what's happening here? Is there gonna be a ball bouncing across the words that I'm singing? Anybody tracking with me here? Like you, you thought it was weird. I'm telling you, it's, if you're not a Christian, you're not used to this, it is weird when you first walk in. Maybe you're watching for the first time today or you're in the house in Claremont for the first time. You're like, yeah, that was weird, man. They were singing a song with words. It was like totally karaoke. Why do we do that? Well, it, it's really not that complicated. There's this Bible verse in Ephesians chapter five. It says this, it says, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms, and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves. Did you catch that? You do that. This is what you do. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. And we're going to cover that one in a little bit because that's weird too, the Holy Spirit thing. But, but the, the truth is like Christians, we should be singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs together. We should be making, here's the key, making music to the Lord in your hearts. When we sing, it's, really, it's not about us like 
singing a song. It's more about singing praises to Jesus because he's worth it. He's worthy of our singing. Now, some of us, you're, you probably shouldn't be singing. You know what I'm saying? That's why we pump it. If you're in the house, we pump it up really loud. But if you're watching online, you probably are in your house. You're like, I'm not singing this song because I don't want anybody to hear my bad voice, right? But, but we sing. It's not about like American Idol tryouts here. It's not about, you know, the voice. This is about you and me as followers of Jesus, Christians saying, you know what? We're going to sing collectively together. And, and this is the cool part part about us singing online and you know we have our gatherings in the house like we have this collective voice all over the world we have people watching in Africa and Asia and Europe all over the world even in Canada right and we get to sing from our locations and online one voice to one who deserves it and his name is Jesus that's why we sing now it might be weird when you first come but it becomes a real important part of what we do in our, in our engagement uh, in a relationship with God. And that's singing. I'll sing in my car. You know, like if you ever see me at a stop sign sometimes or a red light and I, I look like I'm yelling, I'm probably singing. You know what I'm saying? I'm singing to Jesus. So the second, oh, let me share this verse. This is really cool. I, I pulled pull this out. Uh, Psalm 96. It says this about singing. And, and this answers a question too. I have people ask me like, why don't we sing more of the old hymns? Well, let me read this. Psalm 96 says, sing a new song to the Lord. Did you catch that? Sing a what? New song to the Lord. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord, praise his name each day, proclaim the good news that he saves. We love to sing new songs to the Lord because he deserves it. Sometimes when we sing the same old songs all the time, they become our songs. That's why you're like, why don't we sing the hymns? Well, that's your song. I don't think the Lord is saying, man, I wish you would sing more hymns from the 1900s because then that really stirs my heart. I'm telling you, God is not like, is, he's not stirred by dimensions of time and generations of time. God is stirred by the heart of man when we lay ourselves down and sing to him a new song. Isn't that cool? That's why we sing. The, the second weird thing we do, are you ready? And there's kind of a progression here. The second weird thing we do as Christians is we, we fellowship. You ever hear that word? Fellowship. Anybody think weird? That's a weird word. Nobody uses that outside of church, by the way. You will never go to, let's just say, a restaurant. Say, hey, are you going to fellowship today? The server at your restaurant would look at you like you have lobsters crawling out of your ears and say, what in the world? Are you stuck in the 1800s? Because that, that word fellowship is a weird word, unless you're here at, in church. Because fellowship is like, what do you think of when you think of fellowships? I know what I think of. I think of somebody's really I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not trying to offend here, but this is what I think of. Somebody's really bad casserole that they bring to, you know, like for a fellowship, you know what I'm saying? And that's the imagery that many people have. And, and let me explain to you what fellowship is. Fellowship is community. It is connecting. Christians, we need each other. And so it's an important thing, but it sure is kind of a weird thing. It says in, um, in the scripture, let, let me go ahead and read this from Hebrews chapter 10. Let us think of ways to motiva motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Watch this. And let us not neglect our meeting together. That's fellowship. Let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but let's encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawn near. Jesus is coming back soon, the author of Hebrews says, so we should always want to be connecting with one another. That's fellowship. Now, here's ways that we practically engage in fellowship, okay, at Riverbank is table groups. Now, who's in, in a table group? Maybe you're in the house, awesome. You're in Claremont, raise your hand, yeah. And you're online, look, I know it's a little tricky. Some people do not uh, feel like they can be in a table group. Can I just tell you, you can be in a virtual table group. We can make that happen for you. If you're not connecting, you see, fellowship, this weird idea is a really important thing that Christians, we need each other. We we can't do this alone. And I'd encourage you to hang out with other people uh, that are like-minded when it comes to their faith, because it'll sharpen you, encourage you. And as it says right here, it'll help us look ahead to the return of Jesus together because we bottom line need each other. The third really weird thing that we do as Christians. Now, it, look, this, if you're a longtime Christian, this is not weird to you and it shouldn't be because it's a, it's a discipline of your faith. But prayer, I want you to think about this. Just 
just off, you know, think about the idea of praying. You're in a room and you're talking to someone who's not there. You're all alone and you're praying and you're pleading and nobody's there. If you're not a Christian, that's weird. You're like, you're ta- who are you talking to? Is there, do you have like a, do you have your mysterious buddy in the room? You know what I'm saying? Anybody ever have one of those growing up? Your, your kind of imagination gone wild, right? That is weird to people who aren't Christians. Maybe you're watching right now and you're like, yeah, the idea of prayer is kind of weird, isn't it? Well, let me just tell you, it might seem weird, but once you engage in prayer and understand what prayer really is, by the way, prayer is simply our conversation with the God of this universe. By the way, it's not one way. We think that prayer is just us talking to God, but actually prayer is a two-way engagement between us and the God of the universe. It says um, in in the scriptures in Hebrews chapter 11, verse one, it says this, that faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance of what we do not see. I love this scripture because it says that we have this confidence and hope in what we do not see. You see, if prayer is like the, the most basic form of faith, It's the most basic form of faith. And as a matter of fact, Hebrews goes on and says this, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So prayer is in essence, one of the ways we please God. Isn't that cool? Prayer is not, it might be weird to the outsider, but to you and me, Christian, this is an essential of the Christian faith. And again, one of those things that you and me, we are not citizens of earth. We are citizens of heaven. And, and we are here as God's ambassadors. Well, we need to communicate to our, uh, to our master, Lord Jesus. And so we pray and we listen. We have this unbelievable relationship that we need to engage in. And prayer is a, a real big part of that. The, the next thing, that we, uh, we engage in and do as Christians is really weird. Is, uh, you ever hear me talk about quiet time? You ever hear me say that? You've heard me say, anybody? You can raise your hand in the house, online, wherever you. I, I talk about quiet time a lot because I have a daily quiet time. Now that's like insider language that can be weird. Like, why do you want to be quiet? I like noise. Have you ever heard that? Like people like noise. People like activity. Now, most Vermonters like it quiet out on their farm, right? You know what I'm saying? But there's a sense of quiet time in religious uh, organizations is just a weird type of thing. Or maybe you've heard it this way, devotions. You ever hear devotions, right? And that's just kind of a weird insider language. Well, well, here's what devotions, here's what quiet time really is. The word devotion or devotional means commitment. And when you and me as a Christian, if, if we each and every day say, I'm going to be committed to Jesus, that means I want to spend time with him. That's what devotion, that's what quiet time is. I want to spend time with God. As a matter of fact, James chapter four, verse eight says this, come close to God. I want you to say this with me and God will come close to you. Isn't that interesting? This daily time that we have, this quiet time, this devotional time, it's really us drawing close to God and in turn, he draws close to us. Isn't that cool? It sounds weird and in, in, in idea form it is, but in reality and practice as Christians, man, this is an essential part of my life. It's an essential part of my family's life. It's every morning our family has just, it's just quiet and we all have our Bibles and we're praying and we're, we're thinking and we're talking to the Lord and we, I'm memorizing scripture. It's an important thing. So devotion is a kind of a weird thing to an outsider, but to Christians as insiders, this is an important discipline of our faith. Now, here's a, a way that you can actually maybe engage. Maybe you have a problem with quiet time, or maybe you have a challenge with having this alone time with God. Let me give you a, a quick tip. You and you here at Riverbank Church have the unbelievable privilege of having a free access to Right Now Media. Now, if you go to the Riverbank Church website, um, if you're at home right now watching online, you can do this. You, you know, maybe you're sitting in one of our seats. You go to go to the Riverbank Church apps uh, uh, website, and and on one of the tabs, you'll see Right Now Media. You just scroll down, click on that. If you're not already signed up, you can sign up right now. And here's what it is: Think Netflix, but Netflix for the growing. Christian. Tons of resources, uh, kids resources, adult resources, unbelievable that you can learn. You can have a quiet time with. I use, uh, I use, I almost call it Netflix. I use right now media all the time to further 
uh, engage in my quiet time. So there you go, a free resource for you. Now, the next weird thing that we do as Christians, and this one, I, I just want you to think about this as an outsider, is baptism. It's just weird, right? Think about this. Like, are they drowning him? If you've been to a riverbank baptism, it's kind of crazy and wild, right? I've seen first time guests come here to see their friends get baptized and their eyes are like this. Like, whoa, are they going to hold him under? Long? Like, what's going on? There's a lot of water, right? That's weird. And it is in concept. And again, as an outsider, this is super weird, but this is an important part of the Christian life. And for you and me, when we see people uh, go public with their Christian faith, that's what baptism is. What a beautiful image it is for Christians. I, I don't know about you, but every time I see it, anybody with me here, I get a little emotional. I get a little choked up because I see people who are turning away from their old life and they're embracing their new life in Jesus and the water, they go into the water as the old person and they come out representing the new life they have in Jesus. That, my friends, is awesome. But if you're an outsider, that's weird, right? This whole idea of baptism uh, is, is really about identification. It's about identifying yourself with Jesus. It's what every Christian should do. As a matter of fact, if you're watching right now, you're in the house in Claremont, White River, you're a Christian, but you've never gone public in, in baptism, you need to. It's something that we should do. It's exciting. It's kind of weird, but there's something supernatural about this baptism that we all should do. I'll never forget when I went public with my faith in baptism. It says in Romans chapter six, verses three and four, have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, you see that identity, we're joined with him. We joined in his death. Like we joined in what he did for us for we died and we were buried with Christ in baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the father, we uh, now we also may live new lives. Isn't that cool? It's an example, an illustration of what Jesus has done for us. When we're baptized, we're reflecting that. It's a beautiful thing. You need to be baptized. You need to do that weird Christian thing and be baptized. I know it seems kind of uncomfortable comfortable, but it's something we do. And we're relating and connecting with Jesus and we're publicizing it for people. It's a really amazing thing we do. But again, it's kind of weird. What about this one? Here's, here's another weird one. And, and by the way, we're going to do this. We're going to practice this today. Communion. I cannot tell you how many people have like had questions about communion. Like even at, like Chris, when you're eating like the, the bread, in the wine, I got my little cup. This is what we use here at Riverbank. When you're using that, like, does that like change into the body of Jesus? Because some traditions teach that. It's like, no, 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 no. This is all representation. It's a beautiful illustration of what Jesus has done for us and we're remembering it. But we make it weird, don't we? Let's just face it. We make it super weird by making ceremonies about it. It, it creeps people out sometimes. And I'm just saying, this is what we do as Christians. We can do this because we're aliens here on earth and we tend to, you know, do some weird things. And communion is one of those oddball things that from the outside looking in, it looks really weird. But I'm here to tell you today that it's a beautiful practice that we participate in as Christians and um, I had some, this is a true story. You can laugh. I had somebody ask me this one time at Riverbank. It's like, isn't that a kind of like cannibalism? Like you're eating the body of Jesus. I was like, great question. Let me explain to you. It's all an example. We're remembering Jesus. Um, it's not what you think it is. We are not cannibals. It's not like that. Like think about this, the blood. Like, have you ever been, uh, like just think about it. it's the first time you are around a Christian environment and people were talking about the blood of the lamb. That's just weird. I'll freak you out because blood is not something. Blood is actually, a dis, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a creepy, disgusting thing. I personally pass out at the sight of blood. You know what I'm saying? Like they pick me up off of many a floors. Amen, honey. Penny knows because blood is kind of one of those weird things, but we talk about the blood and here we have communion. We're drinking the blood. No, 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 no. It's a representation. And yes, the blood is a significant part of our faith. And I'll explain that in a little bit. But the truth is, uh, it might look from an outsider's point of view that communion is weird, but it's an important practice. And we will practice this in a little bit. Remember, if you're online, get your elements ready. You're going to need them. 
Another thing that we do that's weird, I'm going to quick hit a couple of these, is fasting. Uh, fasting is kind of a weird, oddball Christian thing. It's become popularized with, uh, with in, in trendy diets right now. But, you know, it's a practice that Christians do. As a matter of fact, Riverbank Church, two times a year, we do a church-wide fast. We will have one coming up at the beginning of the next year. And we'll collectively take something and we'll fast it, whether it's social media, food, sugar, coffee. That's, that's what gets people in New England. That's just weird. Why are you fasting coffee? <laughs> well, here's what fasting is. It's us forsaking something so that we can focus in on Jesus. Remember, we're aliens here on earth and I don't need coffee. I need Jesus. And as I'm representing here, uh, Jesus here on earth, I want to take a break from things that I've gotten used to here as his representative. And I just want to take some time and focus in on him. That's fasting. Another one is joy in the midst of trials and difficulty. Probably one of the weirdest things that Christians uh, exude or represent is joy in the midst of trials. It says in James chapter one, verse two, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider an opportunity of great joy. The world looks on that and says, throw a fit, man, get your way. If things are bad, fix it. We're in the faith of Christians. It's like, hey, troubles are gonna come my way. I'm going to go through difficulty. As a matter of fact, that's par for the course as a Christian. I am going to have trials and I'm going to embrace them knowing that this is going to help me grow in my faith. I'm going to mature as a follower of Jesus. Bring it on, God. I trust you. That's weird from the outside world. But for us as Christians, this is what we do. We don't freak out. We further engage knowing that this is how God is growing us. Now, the next weird thing that Christians talk about is the Holy Spirit. Now, this is a big one. I remember when I was little, first time I ever heard the Holy Ghost, I freaked it out. I was like, where? I just had an image of somebody in a, a sheet with holes poked out and follow me around. And I know on the outside, maybe you're here today, you're watching online. You're like, yeah, that is so weird. The Holy Spirit thing, the Holy Ghost. Like what in the world is that about? Well, this is probably the most important thing that we as aliens here on earth have access and power from. And that is the God of the universe. The promise that he placed his spirit inside of us when we believed in him. You remember that time when you gave your life to Jesus? Well, God in his promise deposited his Holy Spirit. He, he deposited his power in you and me. Isn't that crazy? I mean, that's weird to the outsider, but for you and me as Christians, we've grown dependent on that power source, haven't we? This has become a part of our lives. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19, don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you? And watch this, and was given to you by God. You do not belong to yourself. You, we are aliens. We are, we are uh, strangers here on earth. And yet God has placed his Holy Spirit in you and me so that we can navigate through this world with his power. Isn't that cool? It's kind of weird. It's kind of a little bit off for the world, but it's real for Christians. You see, he gives power to live. He gives you and me power to give. He gives us the power to navigate through life. He gives us wisdom and hope and self-control. That's the Holy Spirit that you and me have. And then the last weird thing that Christians talk about and, and maybe I would say freaks people out a lot, especially in this day and age, is the resurrection. You hear that word resurrection? I've had many people come to me and say like, so is that kind of like zombies, right? That's kind of funny. Like, I get that. I get it. I get what you're saying. No, 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 no. Zombie, zombieism is made up by man. How to describe some, uh, you know, something that is not what resurrection is. L let me explain to you what resurrection is. It says in Romans chapter eight and verse 11, the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, the Holy Spirit. But watch this. And just as God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living in you. You see, the resurrection seems to be really weird, but can I tell you, it's the greatest promise we have for eternity. You see, one day you and me, 
we will leave this mortal body and one day God will resurrect our bodies as Jesus was resurrected. That's resurrected. That's glorified. We will be glorified. The, the, the jacked up back that I have two weeks ago, I could barely get up. Guess what? I don't have to worry about that anymore because I'm going to be glorified. That's what resurrection is. The dead will be given life for those who believe. What a beautiful promise, but yet it can be really weird. Now we talked about a lot of weird things today and the truth is Christians, we're aliens. This is all temporary. This is not our home. And over the past few weeks, we've talked about that. And there are some things that we do that are just plain old strange to the outside world. It's not an excuse for us to be mean, to be jerky. It's an opportunity for you and me to engage in a rescue mission so that we can shine a light to the world around us. They can see hope, life, purpose, freedom, and someone who has a driving spirit within them, the spirit of God. Will you pray with me? Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the fact that we can talk about some of the weird things we do or some of the weird things we believe. And it's one of those things that as a family, we can talk about, but God, I thank you that we have them and the freedom to, do, to discuss them. I pray God that we would be a people who live out as strangers and aliens here on earth, that we would live out a life of love, of kindness, of purpose, empowered by your Holy Spirit, so that the world looks on and says, I want what you have. How can I have that? I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, you're watching today and uh, we were talking about this whole idea, these weird things that we, we believe and do as Christians. And you're like, I feel like an outsider. I wanna, I wanna know this Jesus you speak of. I, I want the Holy Spirit that you speak of to come and live in me. I, I want to know that one day, Chris, I'm going to, have a resurrection that you spoke of that I'm going to be glorified in heaven one day. I want that, Chris. How do I receive that? Well, it's not that hard. It's super easy, actually. It starts with us being honest, though. We have to be honest about ourselves. In order for us to experience the forgiveness and hope of God, we have to be honest about our frailties. The Bible says this, for all have sinned, and all have fallen short of God and his glory. Here's what this means. You and me, we're sinners. I know that's like one of those old fashioned words, maybe another one of those weird things, but sin is simple. It's wrongdoing. It's missing the mark. You've told lies. You've stolen things. You've thought things you shouldn't think. You've slept with people you shouldn't sleep with. We've done things we shouldn't do. That's sin. And the Bible says that sin, that wrongdoing causes a void and a break in relationship with God. Maybe you're watching right now and you feel that void. You're in Claremont right now. You're sitting in that theater and you feel that void, that gap between you and God. The Bible says that that gap is real. That void is real and it's caused by sin because God is holy and God is perfect and he cannot be in a relationship with sin. It's impossible. The Bible goes on and says this, for the wages of sin is death. That means this, that our sin, the wrongdoing that we've all committed, the consequence of our sin is death. Nobody watching right now will debate with me or argue with me this very fact that 10 out of 10 people die. You will die one day and that's a, that's a result of sin. We are all broken, frail because of our sin nature. But, but here's where it gets, this is where it gets heavy. It's not just that you and me are sinners and that we're gonna die one day. It's that we are sinners in that without our sin forgiven, we face eternity separated from God in a literal place called hell. My friends, that is a serious problem. I hope you feel the weight of that, that our sin has an eternal impact. Without our sin removed, without our sin taken away by God, we face eternity separated from him in hell. Chris, that's a problem. I don't like it. I'm here to tell you, I don't like it either. That's why I want to tell you the good news. And the good news is this, 
that God saw you and me in our sin. And he did something about it. He sent his son Jesus to come and live a sinless, perfect life. Jesus died on a cross to pay for your sins and my sins. He, he bled on that cross. He sacrificed. He paid the price that was necessary for your sins and my sins. And as he died on that cross, he said, it is finished because he completed the work that was necessary to pay the price for our sins. You see, Jesus was placed in a grave. And three days later, we just read this, Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. He conquered death and hell so that you and me don't have to face it. And we too can experience the resurrected body. But here's the thing, you have got to believe. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be rescued. The scripture goes on and says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus is the solution to our sin problem. Let me ask you this. Do you know him? Well, Chris, I'm a good person. Who cares? I mean, you should be a good person. That's what people should be. But that doesn't mean that you have been rescued from the consequence of your sin. Well, Chris, I'm a religious person. Well, religion does not rescue. As a matter of fact, res uh, religious people put Jesus on the cross. Religion is cute and nice, but it does not rescue. Do you know Jesus? If you're watching right now and you're like, no, I, I don't, but I wanna know him. Well, I wanna give you the opportunity right now, if you're watching online, to say yes to Jesus. Do me a favor. I want you to text respond now, those two words to 94,000. Go ahead and do it right from your home, wherever you are. Just text those two words, respond now to 94,000. Here's what will happen. A link will come to us. I wanna click that link and send you something. You, but we've gotta correspond. Just text respond now to 94,000. Now, if you are in Claremont, you're in White River Junction and you wanna say yes to Jesus, will you do me a favor? Just close your eyes and bow your heads right where you are. I'm gonna to count to three. And if you wanna say yes to Jesus, I'm gonna invite you to quietly raise your hand right where you are. I'm gonna to count to three. One, believe on the Lord Jesus, the Bible says, and you will be rescued. Believe, not be religious, not be moral, believe too. Today is the day that you can be rescued right now this moment in your seat, right where you are. And if that's you three, will you just raise your hand right where you are so we can see it? Just raise it up so we can see it. Go ahead. Keep it high enough so we can see it. Right there in Claremont, White River, go ahead. If you have your hand up, here's what I want you to do. At the end of your aisle, wherever you are, I want you to look to the end of your aisle and I have a friend I wanna connect you with right now. Go ahead. Just look right to the end of your aisle. And they're gonna get something in your hands. Just want you to go with them. They're gonna get something in your hands to help you better understand what it is to follow Jesus. My, my prayer for you is that this day will be marked for you for eternity. Will you pray with me? Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for those online and our houses who've given their lives to you today. Thank you, Jesus, that we as Christians can celebrate our weirdness here on earth. That, that we can celebrate that, look at that, and know that this all serves a purpose. And that is ultimately, Lord Jesus, to bring you glory. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen.